transformations. In this part, we want to learn how to transform the basic function to other functions using some techniques, transform, which is called transformations. And we can get the graph for a new function from a very basic function or from the parent functions. So for example, if you have a function which is hx is equal to x squared plus 2. So the parent function or the basic function, parent function, for this h, which is f of x equals x squared. So we start from the x squared. This is the x squared, right? We add a 2 to get a new function. So h of x is f of x plus 2, right? f of x plus 2. So this is y equals f of x, which is x squared. And h of x is added 2 on the f function, f values. So in other words, all the y values will be added by 2. So in other words, it will move up vertically. Every point will add by 2, move up to vertically. So this is the h, x, which is equal to f of x plus 2, which is x squared plus 2. So if you subtract 2, it will move down, right? If you have another function, which is uh, gx, which is x squared minus 2, so it will, which, this is f of x minus 2, so it will move down 2 units. Okay, so this is gx which is equal to x squared minus 2. So this one gives you an, one technique, one transformation, which is called a vertical shift. Vertical shifts. We suppose we let c be greater than 0, which is a real number. Then what is h, the graph for hx, hx is f of x plus 2, uh, plus c, sorry. So this one, the graph of h can be obtained by shift, by shifting the graph of y equals f of x vertically upward c units, right? Because we add a c on the f values, right? Function, f function values. So we will shift, we will change the y values, right? We will change the y values by shifting upward c units. <coughs> x value doesn't change, right? And h of x equals f of x minus c. So here we always assume c is positive. Then we will shift the original function f of x vertically. downward C units. So we subtract C on the F values. So in other words, with the Y values. The X doesn't change, right? For each X, you will have Y, then we subtract C. So that means Y value will be 
decreased by C units, so it will move down C units. So this is called the vertical shift. Let's look at another example. h of x equals x minus 2 square. So the parent function or the basic function, which is f of x equals x square. We know the graph for x square. Right? The graph for x squared is this one. This is f of x equals x squared. So now we subtract 2 on x. So for example, this, the, this point is 0, 0, right? If you subtract 2, it becomes... So when it will be 0, 0 here? When x equals 2, it's equal to 0, right? So it will shift to the right two units, right? We subtract two, so this is zero, zero. This is zero when x equals zero, right? So here is when, uh, this is zero, zero. So where is the zero, zero point for our h? Uh, where is uh, the, the uh, h value equals zero? When x equals zero, so for the f function f, when x equals zero, it's equal to zero. So when x, if x minus 2 square, so when x, what kind of x value will make h to be 0? x is 2, so we move to the right, 2 units. So this is our h. So what is h? h is x minus 2 square, right? So from the graph, from h, x is actually f of x minus 2, right? If you replace x with x minus 2, it will recover x minus 2 square. The same thing, if you have a gx. gx, which is x plus 2 square. So when we make g to be 0, when x equals negative 2, so 1, 2, negative 2 is here. This is 2. This is negative 2. This is 2. Right? We move, to the, move, move the curve by 2 units to the left. Right? This is g, x equals x plus 2 square. So this tells you that this gives you an idea for the another technique, transformation technique, which is called horizontal shift. Horizontal shift. We still let c to be greater than 0. So what if you have a new function which is from the original function by replace x with x minus c. So we subtract c units on the input. Then the graph is just the shift. The y equals original function f of x horizontally. to the left, or to the right, C units. If you have a function hx, which is f of x plus c, we add c on the inputs. We shift y equals f of x horizontally 
to the left C units. So let's look at the, the difference between the horizontal shift and the vertical shift. The vertical shift, we add C on the whole Y values, whole function values. Here, we add C or subtract C on the variable X, the, the independent variable X. Right. So this is a change on X, and this is a change on the Y values of the original function. So, one thing you should be careful is the horizontal shift. That is, you subtract C, then we may move to the right. We add C, we will move to the left. It appears that the rule of the horizontal shift is opposite of what seems natural. Okay. So now let's look at another example, which is hx equals x plus minus 1 absolute value plus 2. So the basic function, or the parent function, obviously, parent function, which is from, which is x equals the absolute value of x, right? So how do we get this h, x, which is, we start from the y equals the parent function. Right, we have we subtract one on the input, so we will move right, move to the right horizontally by one unit, one unit. Then you will get y equals x minus one. Take the absolute value. Then we move up by two units because we add a two on the whole value right two units then you will get y equals then plus two okay so the graph we know that this is the graph Right? If we move to the left, uh, to the right by one unit, so this is the one, this is the graph, and move up, so it's a move up, Move up one, one, two, it becomes this one. This is our H. This is our H, right? Which is this one, this graph. So you can see the difference. The first one is we subtract one on X on the inputs. So we will need to move horizontally. Then we have a new function, right? And we know the graph of this function. Then we add a two on the whole function. So in other words, we change the y values by adding two. So it will move vertically. Then you will get your last answer. Another example is h of x equals x plus 1 square minus 2. Okay, so the parent function, which is f of x equals x square, right? This is the parent function. 
So let's change. Look at the the first thing we need to know what is the graph for the function y equals x squared. So which is the, this one, right? This is y. Then we change it. We add one on x on the input. So we will have x plus one squared. And this one, the graph will move to the left by one unit. So the graph will look like this one. Then we minus two on this function, on the whole function. We minus two. So we will, so the graph will from here, one, two, move down two units. Sorry, I didn't draw very well, but that is the sketch of the graph. So this is the graph for the final graph. Okay, this is for the final graph. This is the final graph, which is the same as this one, right? Okay, so now let's look at uh, another example to introduce a new transformation. So we have h of x equals negative square root of x. So the parent function, obviously, the parent function for this h, it is f of x equals square root of x, right? And we know the graph for the square root of x, this is the parent function we should uh, memorize. This is, looks like this one, this is f of x equals square root of x. So what is h of x? h of x from this expression, which is just the negative f of x. So in other words, we multiply by negative 1 on the whole function f. So in other words, we multiply by negative 1 on the y values. We didn't change anything about x. x is still the same input, but the y to be the opposite. So the graph will look like this one. This is the h x, which is negative f of x, which is negative square root of x. So if you multiply negative 1 on the whole function, then the graph will reflect about the x-axis. So this is called the reflection. This is the technique for the reflection about x-axis, which is hx equals negative of f of x. So we reflect the y equals f of x about x-axis. So we just have the opposite y value, but the same x values. Then we look at this example. This is the h of x equals square root negative x okay square root negative x so the parent function which is f of x equals square root of x we know the square root of x which is this one right but now I want function that we multiply negative 1 on x so the x values would be on the opposite values but we have the same y values right we didn't change the y values so it would be this one so this is called the refraction about so this is the this is the f of x equals square root of x and this is the h of x equals square root of negative x, right? Okay. 
and uh, this is h of x should be equal to f of negative x, right? When x equals 1, if x equals 1 here, f of x equals 1, so it makes sense it must be x take a negative 1, right? It becomes the same 1, square root of 1. So, this gives you another ref refraction about y-axis. So this is the hx equals f of negative x. That is obtained by reflect the y equals f of x about y-axis. Okay. So let's look at the example. This is the h of x equals square root negative square root x plus 2. Okay. So the first thing, the parent function, which is f of x equals square root of x. This is the parent function. So we start from y equals square root of x. So the graph is this one, right? Then we add a 2. We have y equals x plus 2. We add a 2. So we what? Add a 2. So we move to the left by 2 units. So this one, right? Then we multiply by negative 1 on the whole function, which is the final function, right? So the graph will look like, we use another color. 1, 2, we reflect. So this is our graph. So you can see we can use this kind of technique or transformations to get a new graph for some new functions. But we notice that so far all the transformations do not change the shape. Okay? Do not change the shape. So now let's look at these transformations are called rigid transformation. They will not change the shape okay so now we want to look at some transformation which will change the shape which is called non-rigid transformation non-rigid transformation. Non-rigid transformation sometimes is not easy to identify, but uh, you can see this is uh, give you some ideas. If we have our original function f of x, right, then we have a new function h of x, which is multiplied by c, c is a 0, greater than 0, multiplied by c on this function. So it will change the y values, right? It will change the y because it will be multiplied by on the whole function y, f, or f. So it will change the y values. So if c is greater than 0, uh, greater than 1, so this is a 2, for example, 2. So it will stretch the y values multiplied by 2. So actually, it will stretch vertically. So this will be a vertical stretch. If c greater than 0 but less than 1, so the y value becomes smaller, right? Multiply a, a fraction less than 1. So it would be a vertical 
shrink or compression. For example, let's look at this example. This is h of x equals 3 times the absolute value of x. So the parent function f of x equals what? The absolute value of x, right? So we multiply by 3. So this is the, our original function, right? f of x equals absolute value of x. So it will go through. Let's, we need to use some sample points to help us. Okay, so this is negative 1, this is 1, and here is 1, right? So now, if we multiply by 3, so 0 is still 0. But if we multiply by 3, so the, this point becomes 3, right? Value is 3. So 1, uh, one 2, 3. It becomes 3. 3 is here. So it becomes this point. And this point will be here. So our new function is is this one, right? It stretch vertically. If we have another function h x, which is one third of absolute value of x. The basic function or the parent function is the absolute value of x. So we know it's equal to this one, right? We still have one, one point. One, one, and negative one, one, right? So we, for this point, it will multiply by one third. When x equals one, multiply one third, so it becomes here. And at this point is still multiplied by 1, so it becomes here, right? So our graph will look like So this is the h of x equals 1 third of absolute value of x. And this one is f of x equals. So you can see we compress the graph or shrink the graph vertically. So this is the first non-rigid transformation. The second non-rigid transformation, which is h of x equals f of c times x. So here, we always assume c is greater than 0. Right? If c is less than 0, there is a f reflection. Right? There is a reflection. Okay. So c is greater than 0. So it becomes two things. If c is greater than 0, so all the x will be larger so it will horizontal no not all yeah for the same input the x value would be smaller right the horizontal it would be the horizontal shrink or horizontal compression right if you want to have one the input is one the original one just input one now you need to input 1 over c, right? The x would be 1 over c. So it will be shrink, okay, horizontally. If c is greater than 0, less than 1. So it would be horizontally stretch. If you want the input is 1, Originally, you just one. Now you need to have one over c. C is less than one, so one over c is a greater than one, right? So it it would be a horizontal stretch. So let's look at the example to help you to understand. So you have this one, right? 
this is our sorry our base our function is h of x equals 2x cube 2x cube okay <clears throat> Two x cubes. Then our f, the parent function, which is x cubed, right? So we multiply two on x. So we know the original one, which is this one. Okay, and here is one and one. Here is negative one and one negative one, right? So now. Well, this point doesn't change, 0, 0, multiplied by 2 is still 0, right? So now, our point, we still want to have 1 value. But uh, how to make to be 1? We need a 4h, okay? We need to input x to be 1 half, right? 1 half. So the point becomes here. When x equals 1 half, h equals 1. When x equals negative one half, h is equal to negative one. So our graph will look like this one. So let's look at uh, this h of x equals f of sorry. One half x cube. One half f the parent function is still f of x equals x cube, right? So our graph will looks like this one. This parent function we use the black color to represent. So we still need to look at some sample point. This is the one one point and this is the negative one negative one point. It will help you to understand, right? We still want our output to be 1, but now it becomes 1 half x, so x must be equal to 2 to get the output to be 1, right? So the point, to get the same y value, it becomes here. This is 2. So the same thing. This would be negative 2. Right, this point would be here. So the graph will look like this one. So we stretch horizontally, stretch horizontally. Okay. The first one will compress horizontally. 